Hey everyone, Richard here. So here's a few drawings I did a few weeks ago over this space of a few evenings. Um, I was basically trying to get back in practice, even though my day job, I was drawing for a living, working uh, in animation. I hadn't been doing a lot of life drawing uh, for a while, just because I was just working such long hours. So for a couple of evenings after work, I decided to just try and get some practice in. And to be honest, I was feeling pretty rusty when I did these, um, just trying to get back into the rhythm and into the mindset of draw figure drawing. So here we are, I'm working on this back pose blocked everything, all the major ideas in, just still working somewhere between finding gestural ideas and obviously um, more refined anatomical and volumetric ideas. And I think at this point the drawing is going okay, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with it. But as I get into the light and tone part of this drawing, I start to lose faith in the drawing and what it can be. Um, as you're going to see, I do a lot of jumping around um, in a certain kind of indecisive way as far as what the light and shadow relationships should be. And I put this down honestly to me being out of practice as much as anything else. Um, still so far so good. I'm still happy enough with the drawing. But as I get to this stage where I start blocking in the shadow, I'm just feeling pretty uninspired by the drawing to the point where in actual fact, as you'll see, when I get to the second drawing, um, which is the one in the bottom right hand corner, I actually didn't record that drawing because I was ready to just abandon this whole page, to be honest. It's not that there's anything inherently wrong with this pose so far. It just, to me, I, I, I like to have very clear relationships between light and shadow. And right now, at this point in the drawing, everything's feeling a little bit muddled. And once again, I think it's, it's probably good to show the things that aren't always a perfect success as much as showing you all the, all the great drawings, so to speak. Um, so here we come, we're down on this drawing down here, and I'm, I'm so disillusioned with this page at this point that I turn the camera off and move on. I then finished that drawing, and then I kind of changed mindset. I'm like, okay, well, let's just fill this page with, with some sketches. I'll, I'll keep recording and keep going. Now, as you can see here, very lightly suggested the head of the humerus and the ridge of the scapula. Um, even though I can't see those things, I really like to understand where they are sitting anatomically on the drawing. So it really helps inform my decisions on um, the relationships between things. So just continuing to, to block out ideas, jumping around the drawing, do a lot of jumping around from the left to the right hand side of the drawing. I never try and finish one area completely. I always kind of hop around so I can continually gauge the relationships between each side of the drawing and the balances and then any adjustments I need to make, I can make those um, revisions on the fly. Adding a tiny bit of tone here and there, it's very, very light, but as you can see, it really helps kind of give organization to the forms. Um, and just kind of going through the process right now, refining things, pushing, pulling where I, I feel it needs to be. Um, and just, yeah, just going through the process still feeling rusty, still quite not, not feeling quite in the groove with everything. But as you can see, I think that the, the end result, it's not, it's not perfect by any stretch, but I do think that this is a fairly good example just to kind of see a process and the way that I kind of approach some of the problems and, and how I go about solving them. So as you can see here, now I'm going in with my finger and I'm really only using the material that's already on the page. I, when I do the, the dark, thick exterior lines, 
I do that knowing that I'm going to go in with my finger and use them to blend. I can always go back in afterwards and, you know, redefine those those edges if need be. But I, I tend to try when I'm doing the tone, I tend to try and use the material that's already on the page. Going back in here now, trying to fix this back pose, which I just was not happy with. Um, so I'm going in and I, as you can see, I'm hitting some of the core shadows, trying to actually bring the tonal value of this drawing to match the other two that are on the page now so that there's a little bit more balance between all three drawings. Um, and once again, even at the end result, I'm still not 100% satisfied with, with, with that back pose, but it's, it's serviceable. Coming in, once again, finding the head of the humerus, the top of the, the bone of the, the, the upper arm, and finding the relationship between the clavicle and the, um, the scapula at the back. So that, that um, what you can call the dimple of the shoulder is where the, the head of the humerus and the clavicle meet. And so once again, it's not something I can see, but understanding that relationship is really useful. Coming in now, just kind of cementing down some of these ideas. Pushing and pulling where need be, not always following the underdrawing that I did, um, you know, precisely, but using it as a foundation for a development of ideas, pulling in some tone. And you can see I, the way I'm using the shadow there to describe form and then going in and softening some of those transitions up with my finger. Once again, only really using the material that's already on the page. I then go in at the end with a kneaded eraser and just pull out some of the highlights. That's to help show how the form is turning in space and where the light is hitting the subject. And that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.